Welcome back to Indiana News Desk. Having conversations about dying can be uncomfortable, awkward, even scary, but death is a reality we'll all face. There's a profession of people who guide people through the process of dying that's different from hospice or palliative care. They're called end of life doulas. My colleague Sarah Whitmire joins us now with more. Thanks, Joe. The profession really began surging during the pandemic and people were surrounded by death and thinking a lot more about their own mortality. End of life doulas are all about supporting the family and the patient to make sure dying is a peaceful journey. Kelly McLaughlin makes her way to the couch in her Carmel living room using her cane so she doesn't lose her balance. The strain she's under is written all over her and her husband Ryan's faces. It's been a grueling couple of weeks, not just with the information and decisions we've had to make, but just that turn of the corner of, yes, I'm going to die from this. Kelly has stage four brain cancer, and after surgery a year ago, the cancer's already back. It's the same kind that Joe Biden's son and Senator John McCain died from. And Kelly's the heartbeat of her little family. She and her husband share four children. The youngest is in kindergarten. She doesn't know yet that her mom is sick. I feel like I'm the glue that kind of holds all this together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and as I get weaker and more tired, um, I'm having to let some of that go. And I feel like, you know, I can't be that person for my kids like I once was. Angela Hershey and Jennifer Foley are here today to listen, provide support, and hopefully just help Kelly relax. Is there anywhere you would, you feel called to start just as far as catching me up on anything new that's going on with um. you? Angela lights incense and finishes laying out an assortment of healing stones and flowers on a small table between her and Kelly. Angela's been on Kelly's care team since August. She's part of a growing profession called end of life or death doulas. An end of life doula is a non-medical person who supports um, dying people and their families through the entire experience of um, from being possibly diagnosed with a terminal illness um, through navigating sort of the healthcare system even, um, including palliative and, and maybe accessing um, hospice care. As long as we've been living, um, we've been dying. And so death doulas are really an ancient uh, role. The term doula means a female trained companion, and it's traditionally been used to identify a non-medical person who helps a woman during childbirth. Angela says you can think of end-of-life doulas as someone who helps you on your journey to dying. I'm not coming in and taking the lead or telling them what to do or saying you should do this and you should do that. It's about letting them lead the way. I'm just walking alongside. The National End of Life Doula Alliance provides training opportunities to end of life doulas and conducts research on the practice. Its membership's been growing steadily, particularly since the COVID pandemic started in 2020. How people died, you know, that was what became important. When you thought about people um, who were dying and being put in refrigerated trucks and, you know, and things like that, like that is not how we want to die. And the doula has always created that space for them to die in a peaceful manner. Anyone can call themselves a death doula, but there are classes you can take and different trainings and everything from massage to understanding the grief process. The consistent part of the training is to just try to teach people how to be non-judgmental, you know, in, in that space, because, you know, people have all types of um, uh things that are connected to them as far as um, their spirituality, um, their personal culture, you know, their home culture, all of these things play a part. And the doula has to kind of, has to make space for all of that. Kelly found Angela and Jennifer through her therapist. After meeting virtually, Kelly decided it was a good fit. I'm all about the journey. And, she, and I'm, like I said, my kids are so dear to me. And she said, the last gift that you will give your children is teaching them how to die well. And that has been like forever stuck in my head. 
she said, there's no greater gift you can give them at the end of your life except to show them how to die well. And that's my goal. I'll kind of stand over there and, and play the singing bowl, if that's okay. Kelly lies back on the couch. It doesn't take much to drain her energy these days. While Angela stands and plays the singing bowl, her colleague Jennifer, who is a Reiki master, works with her hands to help Kelly relax and reduce some of her pain. I have a um, heart healing uh, perfume that's um, called Magica Rosa. Rose is really healing for the heart. I'm just going to place a little bit on your heart. Kelly relaxes and seems to be drifting off. If you want to smell what Edie Abel smelled like, Kayla, come really? smell me. This is oh my Mama. gosh, here. Two, Bring it to her. Put some on your heart if you want to. Literally. It has a roller. I mean, like, tears are coming to my eyes. It is, it smells just like her. Well, just let her be with you now. Just stay with that. Don't, don't come out of it. Stay with that. As Kelly's condition worsens, Angela and Jennifer will come more often. They'll help make plans for hospice when the time comes. They'll figure out what Kelly wants when she's in transition. Does she want to be read to, hear a certain kind of music? Kelly hopes her last weeks and days will be that final gift to her children. It doesn't have to be in a hospital with beeps and monitors and doctors. I mean, sometimes that's just how things turn out, and I get that. Um, but... This alternative way of approaching it as a very spiritual and sacred crowning of your life, I think it could be very healing for you and those you love. Soon, Angela and Jennifer will start meeting with Kelly's kids. And after Kelly passes away, the doulas will transition to helping the family and supporting them as they deal with the grief of losing a wife and a mother. One of the things the doulas have really helped Kelly with is prioritizing the time she has left. You know, this summer they met with her and helped her come up with the three priorities for how she wants to spend the rest of her life. Not surprisingly, family's number one, friends is number two, and raising awareness for glioblastoma is number three, which is why she talked to us. Um, but having those three buckets has really helped her to be able to say, no, I'm not going to spend my energy on that because it doesn't fit into one of the buckets. We heard Kelly talk about her family in your story. Here's a clip from an interview with Kelly where she's talking about research and glioblastoma. Nobody knows about it. And honestly, by the time you get diagnosed and like finish up some a little bit of treatment, over half the people have already died from it. I mean, the life expectancy for someone with my diagnosis is usually between 10 and 15 months after your diagnosis. Like, that's not very long. Um, and the survival rate at five years is like 3%. So, you know, you just kind of do the best you can with what you have all the while pushing for something more, something better. I mean, there's promising trials, but... A lot of people don't, people aren't around long enough to get to the trial for its work. So it's kind of a catch-22. Glioblastoma is the most aggressive form of cancer that starts in the brain. And Kelly is just this incredibly positive person, but this has been a lot for her to process. She says as long as she still has the gift of life, she is going to do everything in her power to raise money and awareness to help find a cure for glioblastoma. And you know, she used to run half marathons. So one of the things she does now is they do a 5K run to help raise awareness. She also does a variety of other fundraisers and the amount of money she's helped raise for research has been well into the six figures. Her goal right now is to just keep advancing the ball and when her time is done, she hopes someone else will pick up the ball and then work to keep advancing it some more. Sarah, thank you so much. Amazing story, powerful story. Thank you thank very you. much.